היי. Thanks you, Yaakov Chaguel, for this amazing, amazing conference. It's so, so, so important. And I would like to um, begin with a personal anecdote. Last year, my uh, granddaughter, kindergarten teacher, told my daughter that when she learned about Herzl, my granddaughter, Shachar, stood up and said, hey, Herzl is my grandma's best friend. Is it true? The kindergarten teacher asked. Oh, no, my daughter said. My mom's, you know, took her a lot to Herzl Center. I'm telling you this because Herzl, Herzl was a master. Yes, of course, he wrote books, but he wrote diaries and articles. And more than that, He understood the journey, the long journey that ha we have. And he wrote a lot of us. Actually, he wrote a lot of sentences and answers to our days. And from his experience, he wrote both personal and public. And he also even wrote about the moment of inspiration that led him to the writing of Medinat HaYehudim. Why he did it suddenly? Actually, he wanted in the beginning to wrote another thing, as we well know. But he knew about the long uh, journey, and he left us a long, lot, lot legacy. But unfortunately, some of us are not familiar, and other read what other people wrote about Herzl, what Rabbi Cook wrote about Herzl, what Echad Ha'am wrote about Herzl, what Jabotinsky wrote about Herzl, but not what Herzl wrote. And it's important to read the original. It's really important to understand, not as a historic point of view, as an answer to our days. Distinguished scholars, Rabbi David Wolp, Professor Giltroy, and Dr. Moti Friedman. I would like to ask all of three of you the following questions. Herzl's legacy, 125 years after here in Basel. Dream come true. Professor Giltroy, what change or not, or Herzl, is uh, old memories or answers to our days? I just spent a year bonding with Herzl and reading him in the original. And uh, it's very exciting to be here to bring these words. And if you think about it, what was Herzl saying? He was a doer and he was a dreamer, a lawyer and a playwright. And he was a bit of a showman. And so he was able to convince people that the Zionist movement was strong enough so that he should meet with czars and kaisers. Now, when we look and think about what happened 125 years ago, and think about today, 125 years ago, the Zionist movement looked robust, but the Zionist idea was marginal. Today, the Zionist movement, I'm sorry to say, doesn't always look so robust. But Zionism is central. It's on us to make sure that the Zionist movement reaches the levels of the Zionist idea. It's on us to make sure that it's not just the III, the Israel indignation industry. It's on us to make sure that it's not just the BBB, the bored bureaucrats' place to go for a big barbecue. We've got to make sure that the Zionist movement comes alive with energy, with dreaming. And it starts with Herzl's vision, which was not just to establish a Jewish state, But he said, Zionism is a return to Jewishness. And so, Micha Goodman, I love you. I agree with so much of what you say. But there's a third dimension of the crisis today. It's not just global warming. And it's not just polarization. There's an identity crisis. There's a, a hole, a God-sized hole in people's heart. And I think that Herzl and the Zionist movement can help us fill that. And we can say, I am a Zionist. We have the answers to the new Jewish problem of today. Thank you. Dr. Moti Friedman, what would we have said, what Herzl will say about Israel today? Well, I think that uh, what Herzl would say today 
is what he said basically 125 years ago in the first Zionist Congress. And maybe just few, or something which is even said, wrote before in the Jewish state when he said, Am echad anachnu, Am echad, we are one. And I think the, the uh, last part of Micha's uh, beautiful words here is like, you know, the, uh, Herzl knew that he would not be able to, to do what, the, what he wants to be, like to create a Jewish state and to go along the Jewish state without Jewish unity, without Jewish solidarity. And they, uh, he was kind of complaining in his, his opening speech of the first Zionist Congress about the lack of Jewish. Um, now, he knew always that to find the common ground between the, the, the opponents in order to achieve something. And uh, I think that uh, A.D. Gordon in, uh, wrote, consequently, just after the uh, Kiev um, cultural uh, conference, and he said that they, uh, we, are, we have uh, on our plate so many beautiful ideas, conflicting ideas. Our problem is that we don't really look at the other side of the, our opponents. Rather, we are concentrating on ourselves. And, they, uh, and this is what Herzl's uh, uh, major achievement in the first Zionist Congress, to put us together, to find the common denominator, which was Zion. He said that all those were, who, who participated in the first Congress uh, felt like it's like, you know, uh, a Mount Sinai revelation, that they are waiting for the Anochi, for the uh, I am of redemption, waiting for the uh, tablets, to receive the tablets of Renaissance. And we, at that time, we became all one heart, one pumping heart with Zion, with the common ground Zion. Now, what did we do with that? And the question is, the challenge is how to get back to that notion of Amichad, and can we do that? Can we come with today's convention, 125 years later, and go ahead, find the common denominator to face future challenges? Thank you. Thank you, Moti. <laughs> Rabbi uh, David Wolp. Both are Israeli, also Professor Gil Troy, you know he lives in Jerusalem. But as a rabbi of Sinai Temple in Los Angeles, like, is it still relevant? Can you use, you know, the examples that we just share now? I want to put it this way to you. Ben-Gurion was a statesman. Weitzman was a master manipulator. Pinsker was a theoretician, but the truth is Herzl was none of those things, not at his core. What was he? We usually say he was a prophet, which is borrowing from religious vocabulary, and there's something to that. But I think we can imagine Herzl as an artist. And when you see Herzl as an artist, you understand something about the state and the potential for the renewal of the state that we otherwise miss. There's this beautiful passage in, in Sondheim's play where the painter says, look, I made a hat where there never was a hat. And it is the idea of the artist to envision that which does not exist and bring it into existence. That's what an artist does. And if that sounds vaguely religiously familiar to you, you will notice that that's exactly what God does in the Torah, which is why God is called Tzur, the rock of Israel, also Tsayar, the artist of Israel. And the great leaders of the Jewish people were artists. David was a poet. Moshe was a poet. It is not alien to us to imagine that our greatest visionaries are artists because only certain dreams get turned into visions. And if you're a great artist, you can turn your dream into a vision. The reason that Herzl had multiple answers to the same question is because art is inexhaustible. It's not univocal. A lawyer might give you one answer. An artist gives you endless answers. And if you see the state of Israel, along with everything else it is, as an extraordinary work of modern art, you realize that it has resources far beyond what we, as participants and admirers of that art, have begun to tap. And if we can return not just to the questions of identity and the questions of statecraft and the questions of war and the questions of peace, but the questions of beauty and meaning and art and spirit, we'll be returning to Herzl. 
You are one of the most... Uh, I'll continue with you. You're one of the most uh, influential rabbi in the States. Do you use the word Zionism, Herzl, Israel in your synagogue, in Con your stages? Constantly. All the time. Yes. Um, well, and what... I, far, far Can you be, share with us far be it from the me, ramifications? Don't, don't far be it for me to Tell brag about truth. my own synagogue. When you say Herzl... Oh, okay, all right, I will. Be um, honest. We take the largest delegation to the APAC conference every year of any synagogue in the country, even though we're from Los Angeles and it's in, and it's in Washington. Um, we have an absolutely unapologetic Zionist commitment and many of you who are part of various Zionist organizations have spoken at my synagogue or been hosted at my synagogue. It's true in America, as you know, Zionism is a word that often draws tremendous ire, but it's a battle that is important for Jews to fight, and certainly I can speak for myself and for my synagogue, I don't think we have any hesitation about fighting what we're convinced is a righteous battle. But it's a battle, with all due respect, that has to take place in the conservative movement, too, and in the reform movement, too, sure. right? We're hearing rabbinic students who are somehow able to get a rabbinic degree from the Jewish Theological Seminary and not be Zionist. You can't. And, and how does that happen? You can't fight a battle. Thank you. You can't fight a battle in someone else's house, right? Right. It's very, no, it has easy. To be, it's very easy to criticize right. people who aren't your own. Of course you fight the battle in your own house. If I didn't have a battle in my own house, I wouldn't fight it, right? I mean, it's just like... Uh, it's just like all the various movements of Judaism. We're always criticizing each other. The trick is to be able to fight the movement that you have difficulties with in your own house. For sure, but the, the more important thing... Gil, oh, moment. Sorry. You wrote a book yeah. just now. It was published by Cohen Publisher House, now in English, about Herzl. His congregation will buy the book? I hope so. I hope it becomes a... a, a you mean you're not giving me a copy? No, I, absolutely. I'm making promo to no, Professor no. Giltroy. Yes. It, it, I, I hope it'll become a foundational text yes. because what's amazing is when you read Theodor Herzl, first of all, you read some of his criticisms of Jewish leaders. They could be criticisms of today of the protest rabbis and of the, uh, and, and, and of the, 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 the wealthy who, who don't really, who are so busy running away from their, their Jewish identity. You also see his dreams and you also see his tinkering. And when you read Third Herzl day to day, you say, I want to be a part of this. I want to fix this. I want to make this better. The biggest mistake we make in the Zionist movement is to think that it doesn't have any fluidity, that it's not part of a process, that it's a thing of, if you don't accept the Zionist movement as it is today, that includes every single Israeli political leader and every single political decision, then you've betrayed us. We've got to look at Zionism as a process, as an idea, so as a that value. Moment. And that's what we need. Dr. Mbati Friedman, in Israel. Tell us the truth. I mean, well, in Israel, I, I think that the, uh, uh, it's too too soon to judge what's uh, the, uh, when you speak about the relations between Zionism and Judaism. What Zionism, the average Israeli. Well, no, no, I, what does he know about Herzl? Okay, uh, the, the answer is mostly a street. Ben-Gurion became an airport, and so on and so forth. And a beard. But, and a beard. And, 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 and Ben-Gurion before but, Herzl but, or but, after Herzl? Yeah, and, 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 no, but, but I, I really think that, like in Perkevo, they say, there are three things which the world is founded is that they, and um, with relation to what you said, uh, Gil, that uh, Zionism is actually uh, going back to Judaism, but there's a third part to it, before coming to Eretz Israel, before coming back to the Jewish state. Meaning, Zionism, which does not have roots with Judaism, is an empty shell. So then, therefore, if, if you don't connect, if you, dis don't connect, if you disconnect Zionism from Judaism, then it's an empty the shell. Right the right quote is, Zionism is a return to Judaism even before returning to the land of the Jews. Exactly. 125 years, that's what Herzl said. It's Herzl's word. That's why we need to read the original. And he said, we the children, who return home find in it some things that need to be reminded, especially we have brothers who are in the lower neck of poverty. And after we heard the bonnet and, and, you know, the help and 
ואהבת לרעך כמוך, and אחריות וספונסיביליטי. So, Herzl legacy for you, in one word. Shema, by which I mean, I beg of you. Yes, there is a huge movement in America, and it exists in Israel too, that is Shlilat Haaretz, instead of Shlilat HaGola, that is negative about the land. You can scream and yell and say these kids don't understand and they're misguided and that may all be true, but none of that will penetrate them. You have to listen, you have to engage, you have to gradually, bit by bit. Remember when Herzl wrote the vast majority of Jews in the world didn't want a state of Israel either. And it took time and persuasion and thought and writing Don't abandon, don't consign all those Jews who haven't gotten there yet or who haven't had the experience that we've had to the dust heap of history. We can't afford to. Please listen to them. And, and I really do believe that in time we can persuade again as we did once before. Thank you. Dr. Moti Friedman, in word, word, Herzl for you. I, I, I think that the, the, to, uh, to know Herzl is not just, not just what you read, it's just what you feel. Herzl is an experience. Once you'll feel what you'll feel, Herzl, then all of a sudden there's so much more which you will see about Klal Israel, about but Israel, and about for, the, the Jews around the world. But for someone that doesn't know about Herzl, one sentence for him. Herzl for you? Herzl for me is an experience, so I can't, I, there's no way I can give you like in a, in a 10 seconds, like, you know, a slogan, but I, but I really think that... Dreamer, role model... All, all the above. Thank you. Professor Giltroy. Herzl was the master of the jujitsu, from the negative to the positive, and I completely agree with you, Rabbi Wolpe. It has to be a positive vision. It can't be the guilt trip, but it has to be the journey. It's about birthright. It's about Zionist salons. It's about Massa. It's about opening our hearts and opening our minds and saying, this was something that was relevant in the 19th century, it was relevant in the 20th century, and now our job is to roll up our sleeves and make it relevant for the 21st century. And that's why we're here. And I think we have to make sure that we continue this conversation, not just in these two days, but afterwards, to make sure that we are part of the conversation, not looking down at any Anybody, not talking down to anybody, but talking with everybody. That was Herzl's genius. Herzl spoke to the nation. He had his prickly sides. He had his criticism. But fundamentally, I call this the move. He said he was moving from philanthropic Zionism to political Zionism. And of course, we continue to defend the state. And we can, of course, we continue to perfect the state. But now we make the move to identity Zionism. And identity Zionism is saying, who are we? And how lucky are we? to have this amazing legacy and be a part of this conversation. And we don't want to bully anybody into the next generation to join the conversation. We want to invite them into this amazing adventure, this great miracle called Israel and Zionism. And I would like to thank you, three of you, and be the optimist. And again, originally, come back to Herzl's road. And these words he write, wrote in 1895, And he said, bring the Jews under one hat will be a dreadful labor, even though each one has a head, or perhaps for that reason. So, patience, responsibility, and let's go back to Herzl's board. Thank you very much. Thank you.